I'm E.T., or as I have justified for this playthrough calling myself, Leonora S. Kennedy, your lovely host. We are playing some more Resident Evil 4, the remake today, and it has finally gotten cold enough for me to justify putting the iconic jacket back on. Uh, I was way too sweaty in the first two episodes, so I had it off. So let's see how long I last in it. It's really toasty. It's such a comfy jacket. I love it. I want to be buried in this jacket. It's like being hugged by a sheep. At one point, you feel like you're suffocating under the sheep. Anyways, last time we got our first little glimpse of Ada, we had some more bonding time with... If you, if you get what I mean. With Louise, figured out that unfortunately Leon is infected with the Plaga and uh, the gift in his blood, and he's gonna have some consequences from that. Let's continue in our journey to save the president's daughter um, in this very exciting next installment. Maybe just, you know, getting a little ratchet. Oh, another call to Roost. Bruce Seconder One, I've got that intel you requested on Louis Sarah. It seems he used to be a researcher for Umbrella. Umbrella? Oop, our Which favorite corporation. Should have left him in that bag to rot. <laughs> Leon's reaction to that. Take a look, but Baby Eagle is your priority. Again, Copy Baby that. Eagle, way too direct with the code name. Church. Condor one, out. I do find it very fun. Well, actually, maybe let's talk about Umbrella first. So of course we have to have a connection to Umbrella. Um, there are some people who have mixed feelings about the way we've kind of the the franchise has swayed from its direct sort of um you know the early couple games the novelizations yes there are novelizations although they're kind of not really canon anymore but i will talk about those i really like them early games and of course the iconic movies mila jovich i love her she's awesome maybe i'll go as like alice for halloween some year but there are people who have mixed reservations about the way the franchise has recently kind of veered from that. Obviously, with the Winter's story and whatnot, they're setting games in sort of isolated environments that always have some sort of a callback to Umbrella. Of course, there's always like an Umbrella researcher or, um, as we've just heard, Luis is a former Umbrella employee or... Umbrella is a big spider's web um, that has reached out into this world and left a lot of consequences. Left a lot of damage in its wake, so like Umbrella always has its fingers involved in something that's going on, but it's it's less like literally felt. You know, so Luis is a former employee. Mia was a former employee from the Ether Winters, Ethan Winters, um, like du duology. Uh, also, we love we love our we love our boy, our wolfy boy here. Like, who's not gonna release the dog? I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate three lately. People and his um his model kind of reminds me of Scratch. Love a good doggo. And of course helps, <laughs> walked right into that one, of course helps humanize um, Leon a little bit. We see him, uh, we see him just like everyone else. He loves, he loves a good dog, um, loves a good scratch, loves a good pet. But yeah, so the franchise of course is, always has a nod to it, but it's kind of like, we're not really seeing Umbrella as directly as we, as we did in former games. I personally, I'm not a purist about any franchise, even things that I'm, I'm really, really love because I'm such a creative person that if they make changes in a direction that I don't necessarily love, as long as those changes are well executed and well done and justified, I'm like, you know, okay, go off. Um, good job. If they're, if it's poor, like art, then I'll be upset. But it, if it's, if it's good design, good writing and all of that, even if it's not like where I would have taken the franchise, I'm kind of fine. So I don't mind personally that they've made these sort of more insular environments and games as opposed to like the big arch of you know umbrellas screen of the world and everything um but that yeah reference to umbrella up oh, we're back in the village and i have to say guys this this jacket did not last long sorry at least we know leon was nice and toasty in the village before it got taken away <laughs> wonder what the final count on that was I think part of it too is the wig. You know, I've got all this around my neck. So I've been trying to look at the actual like lore and list. You know, they like artists put all this work into world building and stuff. Games are in particular one of the things where, you know, you have to uh, you have to live with the fact that people are only going to see part of it. You know, variable parts of it depending on how much they actually explore. I mean, if you look at even the trophy um, percentages for like com the trophy you get even just from completing a game, it's always like, it's low and it's like, damn, a lot of people just didn't bother finishing it. So let alone all the side content. What are the mutated dogs called? Cool Mios. Um, my pronunciation on that was probably awful, but all right, let's go. Oh God, I've gotten so used to having a, um, a, like a discover 
mode or like an investigation mode or like listening in the in the last of us or you know like in the witcher you get the the glowing yellow I've gotten so used to having that that i keep like looking for a button to hit that'll just show me where all the loot is and it's funny because it makes you realize how coddled you've become by relatively recent like inventions and norms because that's not something that you know older games had but i've gotten so used to it just being offered to us somehow through the mechanics that um i, I mean you don't realize how these things have become crutches it really is amazing how much effort has gone into game design to make experiences a bit more seamless and i know there are a lot of people who will whine about you know how things should be harder and you know how convenience in games is not good for you but i think it's excellent i think the experience should be what people want to make of it you know if you're paying for a game you should get to play it the way that you want to play it um i mean not totally obviously there's you know creative freedom and creative decision making that goes into it i'm not saying that games should be easy easy but what i'm saying is like accessibility features are incredibly important and also you know if people want to have a slightly less challenging experience there's no shame in that if you want to just i play games for escapism and enjoyment personally i don't I, i'm not playing to like get mad and rage quit all the time or to like be a sniper um and if I want to do that, I want to do that. You know, if you want to be really a really good shot and that's what you, you get enjoyment out of, then good for you. But, um, you know, something for everyone. So the fact that there are all these inventions that have been made the experience feel really sort of seamless and immersive and you haven't even noticed how commonplace they've become. It's just, I mean, the industry is great. The way it's just growing and changing and improving every day. Um... All right, Komiya is taking care of. I'm trying to listen. Is there one more? Yep. Oh, fuck. I was in the middle of reloading. I have to say, Leon does not reload very fast. Part of the difficulty tuning, I guess. Fuck. Okay. So it's getting, it's also getting late here, folks. I've been filming for a while. Not that I'm making excuses. I'm totally making excuses. All right, where's this damn dog? Okay. All right, there we go. We keep making our way. Man, this wig has gotten so itchy. It's so itchy, guys. Pain is beauty. The things I suffer for you. Um, okay, I think there are some villagers that come up at this point. Can I do any crafting? Okay. Yes. The answer is yes. And the add that I should. And right, I think we'll... Okay. I haven't gotten the rifle yet. I should invest in that. That's one of my favorites. Um, I know for a fact there is. Oh fuck! I could have. I could have knifed that woman, and I didn't because of my view. Did anyone else feel bad beating up old ladies? Because I kind of don't in this game. So I mentioned the wig. Also, funny thing about the wig. So I, you know, so far they are the. The life cycle of this channel, which is a whopping three videos so far. We're gonna keep going, guys. Stay along for the ride. But um, I've I've just been wearing this wig for this playthrough, right? I've got a different one for Baldur's Gate. If anyone wants to check it out. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like I like the the closet cosplays. I think they're fun. They're fun immersion. Um, I enjoy them. <laughs> Maybe you're just never going to see my natural hair, too. I'm, I'm kidding. You will. There are other photos on all my socials. <laughs> it, it's black box dye right now. I'm not taking the wig off to show you because it's too much of a hassle to take this thing on and off. I just got a cartilage piercing, too, which um, some of you might know if you... Oh, okay. It's calmed down a little bit. It doesn't hurt as much. It's nice. But if you watched the earlier two parts, you would know. Um, which means uh, positioning this wig properly without nudging it is difficult. That's one of the things I love about Resident Evil 2. It is so hard that even on the lo one of the lowest difficulty settings, I'm on standard right now, um, you will still get... That drawer wasn't empty, but I've noticed with other games, you still get empty drawers. And it's like, well, okay. Just psych out. Just as far as de design goes, they're just psyching you out. It's not like, oh, there's loot in here when you play on a lower difficulty and it's not because you're on a higher difficulty. No, that this is the easiest setting and there's still it's still empty. Anyways, the wig. I came I was I was um I was making myself tea or something and I was talking to my mother in costume and I just came up and she just turned and just saw me. And uh 
she could not get over it looking at me repeatedly. And this is my mother. She raised me years. Very, very familiar with my face. Uh, she, she just couldn't stop staring at me. And um, I don't know. Oh, it's like, oh, okay, you know, she's in the East Head. But eventually you're talking about it. And apparently she just likes me with this hair so much more. And I'm like, great. <laughs> My mother just wants a daughter that's more normal and blonde, folks, as opposed to, like, emo, piercings, black box dye, um, kind of goth. Um, I'm kidding. She loves me. We have a great relationship. But I just, I thought it was funny. I just dyed my hair a little, my hair is naturally quite dark, but I just dyed my hair a little bit darker, black box dye, and then I put this wig on, and I never thought I could pull off being blonde, because I'm so pale, I thought it would wash me out. And I actually, I love it. I think it looks good. <laughs> So now I'm like, shit, I might have to dye my hair again. Let's do a dramatic reading of this, um, readable. Wait, am I allowed to read it again? Where did it go? I can hear that snake crawling around and I'm irritated. Big ol'. I was confused about this building when I first encountered it. Um, let me know if you agree, because, like, this 100% looks like the church, right? Because you go in and it, it feels like a church. It feels like more like a country church, like the church in the other village game. Um, first aid spray, thank god. Although it looks like it's gonna be treasure. Well, in this game, first aid spray is treasure, right? But I thought it was the church, and then it's like, no, the, and the place that you're trying to go to find Ashley this whole time, um, it's like, nope, it's like a meeting house type building. I have something I think you Our favorite merchant. He's really fun in the shooting range, too, isn't he? Merchant tip. <laughs> Welcome. He was about to I, I cut him off, but he was about to say the stench of battle on you made. It's like, hmm, sexy. <laughs> All right. Real talk. Did, who uses a bolt thrower here? Because I don't. I hate it for some reason. I'm sure there's someone out there and they're going to be adamant about how it's like their favorite weapon out there. But like, I just, I personally don't. If you do and you find it effective and whatnot, let me know. Because maybe I'm like messing out. Um. All right. We're going to buy the rifle. I love his line. My favorite is um, gun rhymes with fun for a reason, <laughs> which, you know, I don't personally believe in, but um, we're not going to get into politics, right? All right, we obviously want to repair our... Okay, we got to sell shit, which uh, we don't have a lot to sell. Okay, I need to up my game in terms of finding treasure, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to repair it at least. Can I trade stuff? No, because I haven't done any requests. I I normally like to do all the requests, but I've been too into vibing with you guys and having little game chats to do some so far. The requests I've noticed are actually a really great way to um, to motivate people to explore the environment more. Like I said in an earlier part, I don't really think I looked up much in the game until the medallion section. I can be ruthless in games, but uh, like I, I don't mind having to hunt animals and stuff, but um, and I do eat meat, but I'm trying to cut down on meat though, just for health reasons. And also, I mean, it's bad for the environment, isn't it? Our meat consumption is probably the worst um, as far as environmental concerns go right now, but don't tell that to a lot of people. They get very upset about it, but um, I don't normally feel that bad when it comes to animals and whatever, but the rats are something. Oh, they're cute. If you look at, I think you can look at the care. Okay, we'll we'll check when we're in the the main menu. But I think there, there's a character model of the rat, and it's cute. It like squeaks and stuff. So I felt bad um, when I had to kill it. But yeah, so I think the the little those side quests are a way of um, game devs obviously just motivating you to explore more, and that you get the full. There's the actual church, church we were looking for before. I think it's really beautiful. The design. Um, the architectural design. I took an architectural drawing class in London when I was in college, and it was like one of the best times just going out and hanging out in the um, pouring rain drawing churches. It's a really fond memory. This makes me think of it. There's another request that involves... Uh, oh, I almost got him through stealth. Again, I think those cues to knife are a little too narrow. There's no way he's still alive. Come on, I just slashed you several times. Um, there's another... There's one that... Oh, okay. I just happened to be by the right grave for that. Oh, does your shoulder hurt, Leon? I could give you a massage. <laughs> okay. 
game's been weird lately. I keep getting people like right in the shoulder or the neck, which is strange because there's a, it's like consistently in the shoulder or neck. So it's weird that it's just like off a little bit. My posture when filming at a desk as opposed to playing on a couch has been a little different. Um, we're gonna be doing PC obviously for Baldur, so stick around for that. Maybe, we, although it doesn't matter. My aim doesn't matter in that. It's fucking turn-based combat, right? Speaking of like, that we, we were dressed at the merchant. I really, I think he's he's such a fun little character. Actually, he'd be fun to cosplay as, wouldn't he? I'm sure people have. Maybe if you just pull a little hard early on. I'm oh, we got another call with Hunnigan. One to roost. The church is sealed up. <sighs> Sorry guys, it's getting to be that time when we like Greek yet. hair underneath here is but swelling sure up under the wig gap. Up tight. <laughs> it's fine. Stick it out, pain is beauty. Oh, she's here. I'm kidding, obviously, sure. guys. Body positivity. Don't be hurting yourself. Just a little bit. Under one out. I love Hunnigan. I'm just saying that I don't really this this vibe the 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 work dynamic doesn't really it doesn't justify itself really in the remake. Um, but yeah, so I was talking about the merchant. I love him. I think he's really fun, and I think it's fun to compare him. Mild spoilers here uh, for eight to compare him to the Duke. Of course. Um, they're both providing goods and services. Their actual in-game mechanic is is similar. You know, you can upgrade, you can sell things to them. Of course, the Duke, you can sell, you can sell meat and recipes and stuff. The merchant, I think he's he's good on that. Um, guess he feeds himself, huh? But I'm just checking around for loot here before we go into that room. I know what it is. So he feeds himself. Um, but the Duke, the Duke knows Ethan. Um, Ethan is. You know, news of Ethan precedes him. He's been sort of awaited for. Well, not awaited for. Ethan is the father of a long awaited for child. Um, the Duke knows, has information about him personally, and has information that is pertinent to him, and he like doles it out sort of over time. He helps him out. In a way, the Duke sort of provides like a call to roost thing, you know, he, he gives him a little bit of direction in the way that Hunnigan does, in that like, you know, you can talk to him sometimes when you're doing trades, and he's like, hey, you have to put like the. The things on the altar here, or there's four dukes, or there's four lords, and you need to do blah, blah, blah. Um, So he gives him information, and he doles it out strategically. And he doesn't really have that much of a backstory. Like, in the cart later, he admits to Ethan, he doesn't even really know what he is, you know, as far as a mystical entity. But there's that dynamic versus the merchant is just a weirdo in this land who is here to get his bag and spread his enthusiasm about guns. Um, and run a covert gun range and have Leon occasionally do errands for him, like kill rats. Okay, we'll check our map here. So we we know at this point that we have to deal with a monster in the middle of the lake and that there are two areas in the lake. Damn, That's you know, I thought I was hoping prizes. we'd get to meet Ashley at this point, but I forgot. You gotta get those two things from areas in the lake. Oh god, okay, this photo is kind of disturbing and upsetting. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to go my full Ashley commentary now because we haven't even met her yet, but this photo, like, being a woman in game, sometimes it's just icky, right? It's not, and I'm not saying Capcom was guilty of doing anything here, but it, as far as the, the remake goes, obviously they've changed Ashley's characterization a lot. They wouldn't be able to really get away with just a straight up remake of the way she's treated in, you know, five with being able to look up her skirt and being sort of classic damsel in distress and throwing herself at Leon and stuff. I love what they did with her arc in this in this version and how they how they remade it but i like photos like this because it, it does remind you about you know how far we've come in terms of representation of women in games sorry i'm just checking my audio levels am i way too loud no, i'm fine how far we've come and also like how far we have to go you know um some of the mods out there for this game are heinous <laughs> you know what they do to like ashley or the ones for two um what they do to claire um so yeah, we still got a ways to go when it comes to not not necessarily the narrative, because like Capcom, again, they redeemed Ashley. They made her character really interesting, but like fandom, the internet, like the way we treat female characters as you know, fans, um, it's a lot. But the reason this this image made me think of it, because from an art history perspective, I I did some art history coursework when I was in uni, so I'm not bragging or anything. I'm just saying if I bring stuff up about like framing, it's me thinking about that. 
But um, from an art history perspective, from a you know media literacy photography perspective, this photo is obviously kind of disturbing. And it's not just like, oh, she's been kidnapped. It's the angle and her pose and the fact that her face is obscured and most of the focus is on her body and like her chest is the most lit in this photo. Um, draws your attention right to it. She's vulnerable. She's on the floor. She's tied up. Her hands are behind her back. It looks like low-key sort of sex trafficking, you know? Um, so it just, it, yeah, it made me think of um, Ashley's whole arc, both in the games and um, the way she's been treated as a character outside of the game. <laughs> More water stuff. I, can we even, is there anything down here that really helps? Drop down. Again, I talked about past, I think, two episodes of this playthrough. Um, Leon's joints would be fucked. <laughs> All right, let's see, this is a part where I'd want to learn. Oh, we're in some catacombs. Oh, right, okay, so I'm gonna just for good measure go ahead and unlock this gate. All right, go over this bridge. All right, Lago the Lake. Okay. Reload there. I like hey, that was an automatic reload too. That was convenient. Thank you, game. Okay. All right. That was convenient. Really? That's not gonna take you? Okay. Let's wait till he gets as close to it as possible. Come on. I've been hit by fire twice now, dude. Go down. Okay. We got the, this guy. Oh wait. I have the rifle now, don't I? Okay. I should equip that. <laughs> Because I like it. Register shortcut. We'll, we'll send it here. Okay. Actually, this is not far enough to justify that. Oh, and man, I have old school iron sights on it. I don't like that. I don't think I've ever had to aim with that. I think I've always like traded something in to get the um, scope like early on. I haven't done that this time around. Okay, my shooting is getting better, but it's still not great. I still keep hitting people in the shoulders. I don't know what that's about. I think it's because I'm keeping my hands down on my desk while I do this. Oh, he's running right at me. It's annoying how they run. I do not like it when they scamper. Okay, we're gonna... Because there's this many and we're in close range. Oh, come on. Again, Liam's not, he's not very quick with the reload, is he? What exactly did all that training accomplish, Leon, that we saw in the broody <laughs> emo introductory monologue, if you can't reload fast? Although, I mean, shotguns are kind of arduous, aren't they? Okay, I got gunpowder. I'm gonna move this a little bit so I can get closer to the... Oh fuck, I hear someone. That was a request, wasn't it? For the vipers. Yeah, so we can do that. Okay, let's get all of our loot. Loot, monkey, loot, monkey. Don't you love looting in games? It's so... I'm sure there have been studies on it. If Also, if you guys are aware of their existence or you have links, drop them. But like the psychological... Why we get so much joy from it. It's like... I mean, it's fun, isn't it? Um, even like, like just collecting virtual stuff. Also, I talked earlier, I'm not sure in this episode, I'm losing track of the episodes I filmed today, um, or not. I talked earlier about how I'm kind of anti-consumption and it stresses me out to accumulate things. I don't know why I'm going balls to the walls with a knife on this one, but just don't feel like whipping out my gun. Um... But yeah, I talked about how I don't like to accumulate like physical stuff. I have quite severe ADHD. My like my object permanence is not amazing. Um, but that's not really a problem in games. I can just open my inventory and see everything. And so I do get like a little bit of joy. And it's all it's virtual stuff, so I don't like feel as guilty about, you know, the plastic that's being manufactured and is gonna end up in like Malaysia or something, you know? Right. There's no point in dealing with them. I don't- I want to save the ammo. Although, they're gonna come after me in this corner, aren't they? So, you know... A joke's on you, Ellie, I guess. Okay. Got that. It's always fun in new games, figuring out, like, when you're playing something for the first time, figuring out whether people are gonna follow you in various points. Okay, we're in the quarry. I don't love this area. 
Or, you know. Good luck finding someone big enough to use this thing. He brought this fun himself, didn't he, by saying that? You never jinx it like that. Horror situations 101. If I'm ever in a real life situation where something seems horrific, I'm not going to run my mouth about things because it's, it's bringing it upon you. <laughs> I don't get another um request which i haven't been doing this playthrough i should be doing them because you know you can trade stuff in i don't know why i wasted the bullet on that i don't think i really need the cash um okay i have two sprays i don't like using sprays i want herbs where are they herbs herbs I mean, the key is fast with this, but I'm so used to them running fast that I anticipate them being gone by the time. Those red eyes, the Kumios, right? I looked that up earlier. Okay. I'm burning through all my freaking ammo. Great job, Ellie. Great job. Okay, then. Oh, but here another one somewhere. Oh no, that's um El Gigante. I think it's El Gigante, right? Um, that's him napping. It's a fun little Easter egg. You can if you get close enough to the gate, you can hear him asleep. Um, I love little stuff like that. That's why I want to work in games, and that's like that's kind of stuff I do with my writing. That attention to detail is so fun, because it's not just about like you putting it in. Also, you know that when the the, the people designing the game did this, um, they were like giggling to themselves, and they were giving themselves a pat on the back for how cute it was, but. It's also like it's it's adding that value to people too because you know a lot of people are not gonna notice but the people who do are like oh it's so cute you get that like little burst of dopamine um, both in the in the attention to detail but also in the fact that like I noticed it I explored and I found this you know makes you feel a part of sort of a secret club and there's um, that's why you know kinship in games and the sort of loyalty you feel and and the way they foster community is it's so strong and I think that's why the industry is taking off so much doing these kinds of things i mean there it's literally an interactive medium that's obvious and that you have to you know physically play with your hands i get that but the fact that it's this interactive just means we all feel a lot more bonded to each other when we notice these things i don't know why i'm creeping here i didn't need to so hot it's the synthetic stuff man I would feel, I feel like I'd feel weird wearing real hair though. I mean, I know I'm all anti-consumption. I don't want to manufacture plastic, but I still I think I'd feel weird. Also, I can't afford like a bunch of real wigs now for different cosplays either. If anyone ever wants like wig recommendations, so let me know. Like cheap ones that end up looking okay. I obviously had to style this one. It's not looking great. I've been down here for a while um, filming this stuff. So it's kind of gotten tangled and everything, but it did look great when I styled it. Okay, with the grave robber request. Keys mostly dry shampoo, make things look less shiny. Dry shampoo is also a godsend for my greasy hair when I go work outside during the day. All right, I need to keep preparing this because my aim has been so bad, I keep freaking missing shots. All right, let's see if we can finally sell things. I haven't been finding treasure and I feel awkward about that. Should I buy the map so that I can find the freaking treasure? I think I might want to buy. No, I have only 7,000. Okay, we're not going to do that. Merchant tips. There are enough weapons here to get a party going. Such a tough guy, Leon. Okay, maybe I should talk about. Um, I wanted to talk. Obviously, I want to talk about acting. I was going to say voice acting. I mean acting in general, because I'm pretty sure Nick did probably did performance capture for things too. Let's actually go downstairs because I know this area and there's a downstairs area. Oh, or we could go to the shooting range and I could practice a little. I don't, do, do I want to waste your time watching me practice? I know I need the practice, but should I waste your time? All right, we'll go down here. Um, Nick Apostolita's, uh, the VA for the actor. I mentioned this in the last episode. I'm trying to make the shift to referring to people as actors as opposed to just voice actors because they're doing more than their voice. So you know, they're doing performance capture. It is a craft. Um, it is, Merchant. Thank you for welcoming me. Destroy the pirates. He's a simple man. He just he just likes firepower. Gun rhymes with fun for a reason, right? Nick Max. Uh, but Nick Apostolitas, I love his voice work. I think he's great. 
But there is something about Leon that's very like, preface this by saying, I have a lot of love for Leon as a character. Let's see if I can do this little rant while shooting. Test my, test my skills here. Um, I love Leon as a character. I think there are a lot of really great moments of vulnerability with him. Um, he's obviously traumatized and all that. Um, I love how he's kind of a tough guy. But again, he can be a bit of a doofus. Like, he can be such a himbo sometimes, you know? Um, he strikes out with women. He tries to make, like, cool jokes, but they're actually really bad. Um, things like that. That humanizes him to me. But also, his voice. There's something about his voice. It is such a fuckboy voice. Sometimes I get, like, triggered and reminded of college. Um, and about people I dated, you know? Like, I actually did okay with that, didn't I? For someone who's talking and whose aim has been really bad lately, I got an A! Look at me, I'm such an academic, and, um, I'm such a, like, I have such, like, former gifted kid, now burned out syndrome, that if you give me praise like this, I'm like, <laughs> thank you. Whenever I bring companions down here, um, I don't think Louise says, says this, because it probably isn't his nature, but, like, Ashley will be like, ooh, good job, and I'm like, mm, thank you, Ashley. Um, <laughs> How do you say you have a praise kink without saying you have a praise kink? Um, but I, I do think, so I was talking about Leon's voice. He does, like, he's got a bit of a fuckboy voice. He sounds like he should be at a frat party or like, and then he's got that, he's got that look like a freaking. He looks like a like bully from an 80s movie, you know? And again, I'm not insulting. People are going to come after me because they they love Leon. I also love Leon, but this is a part of his character. It's a part of his character that he is, he, he fits all these tropey stereotypes. Um, he, the, I mean, it's part of Capcom's storytelling in general. You know, they hyperbolize a lot of um, various parts of narrative in the West. Um, different archetypes, tropes. Chris is like, a hardened soldier guy and he's tough and he's honorable um leon you know he goes from being like the innocent rookie cop to being sort of the cliche um super secret spy brooding ptsd super secret spy and then you know chris has got the sort of like typical action man leading man look he's you know beefy and he's got you know the five o'clock shadow and he smokes um and then Claire is, you know, a badass biker chick, and Ada is the sort of cliche femme fatale, sort of out, out for serving herself. Jill, who's like the lady cop, lady soldier with a chip on her shoulder, all that kind of stuff. There are all these tropes, but I'm, I don't mean that they're tropes in, in a bad way at all. Um, tropes are a part of storytelling. <laughs> they're an important part. They're a part of media literacy. They convey certain information. They codify certain things about our culture, um, stereotypes, prejudices, uh, ways in which we decide to self-limit ourselves. Um, boxes we lock ourselves in, cages we lock ourselves in, you know, you deal with a lot of emotional repercussions if you decide to tell yourself that you have to be brody and masculine all the time, like not deal with your trauma, things like that. So tropes are a really important part of culture and Capcom very smartly uses a lot of them and sort of um, comments on that, you know? Um, so Leon, the fact that I'm saying he's like a freaking frat boy is not, it's not a bad thing. Uh, and he's not literally a frat boy. He has depth and character, a lot of bravery and a lot of heart. And there are a lot of really cool, vulnerable moments with Ashley throughout all of this um, that I love. They added a lot of vulnerability to, I mean, modernize it, of course. They want to, they sort of toned down a lot of things about his character so that like he's a little bit more palatable for modern audiences. And he's more just agreeable as a leading man, as someone that we all simp over. Um, you know, he's still smarmy and sort of a smartass, but he's not so jokey all the time. He's a little bit more tortured. He's not just dealing with his trauma by being funny. Um, and he has those vulnerable moments with Ashley where he kind of supports her and he gives her pep talk and he has shoulder to cry on. And he has that great, you know, great exchange with Luis when he dies. He has a, a standoff with, with um, Krauser, all that kind of stuff. So that he obviously has a lot of depth. And essentially, I really just want to like, Take the scotch or the whiskey out of his hand, give him a glass of water, drape a blanket over him, give him a kiss on the forehead and tell him everything will be all right, you know? Um, he's great. I love Leon. 
but he is kind of like a fucking fuck boy. <laughs> um, I mean, look at look at the hair. Like, look at it. Look at the face. It's like he he looks like he should be playing lacrosse, um, and like not calling you back. So I, but that's what I love about it. You know, he's he's that stereotype, and then they, but they they humanize him and they torture him a lot, and they make you really love him, um, and they make you really appreciate the aspects of him that are tropey. It's not just like oh he looks a certain way, but then his personality is different. It's like no, he is a bit of a himbo. Um, but he, he still has a lot of depth. And so they, they take certain character stuff and they um, punch it up to a certain level and then they appropriately bring it down to, to the right level. I mean, it, narrative in the, in, with Capcom is just excellent. Um, now, it's, it's gotten to be all that little rant to say. Um, I don't, when I talk about them using tropes and stereotypes, I don't mean it in a bad way. <laughs> Capcom isn't exactly known for its like gritty down to earth realistic, in-depth character development and storytelling that's more like a The Last of Us territory, etc. But it's intentional in Capcom's part, you know, they have a very distinct genre and style, which is the hallmark of a good storyteller when you can recognize something like that right away, like that it's their work, that it's a theme from one of their games, and it's very, you know, big and campy and anime-inspired and people yelling kind of funny lines like it would be out of an anime, like overdramatic and emo and, and all of that. And they use these hyperbolic Western tropes um, to make statements about, you know, Western culture, to have fun. Um, and it's, they use them very deftly. And they still, even though, you know, you've got characters fitting stereotypes that could otherwise make them really fl flat, they're not flat characters. They grow and they develop over time. And they're characters that have enough pathos and gravitas and whatever to have developed a fandom that like really does care about them. But anywho, yeah, big fan of the franchise. I'd be curious about your thoughts about, you know, Leon and his characterization as well. It's obviously something that's going to keep coming out th up throughout the playthroughs and the only time I'm going to talk about it. Oh, let's look at El Lago. Um, also, like, favorite actors for him. It's it's hard to compare them, right? Because it's not necessarily apples to apples, is it? It's not... Because um, the tones of, of the games are not exactly the same. Uh, Paul Mercier, obviously amazing in the original four because it became so iconic. Uh, I Like I said earlier, I had a little crush on the original Leon, so it's like, good job, Paul. <laughs> but obviously he was more smart-assy in that, and it was more sort of campy and crazy. And out there, this is a lot more grounded, this in the two remake. And of course, the indomitable Matt Mercer, the nerd god. We all love him. I think they brought him back for Death Island recently. Death Island was good, by the way. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess it was good. It was good. It was kind of uh, mid-level for me. But it was it was fun. Seeing Chris in a Hawaiian shirt was fun. I am such a, a fangirl. I've watched, you know, all the animated movies, even the really bad ones that take place in countries like Penam's Dam. Um, and Eastern Slav Republic, uh, where I've watched all the movies and I've even read the books. There was a book series in the, I want to say late 90s, early 2000s by S.D. Perry, who is another female speculative fiction writer who uses her first initials, uh, which unfortunately is, it's con in the industry, but it, it's unfortunately founded in a <laughs> misogynistic tendency that, um, men had in terms of not buying books because there were female names on the cover. That's not necessarily why every woman does it now. Um, I do because it's kind of fun and I like E.T. and that those being my initials and um, being a speculative fiction writer. It's, you know, it's good. Okay, so we need to find boat fuel. Come Gotta go on. clear out Fill some more. When you're done. <laughs> exactly! Of course, Leon is such a gentleman, he would say that, right? He'd always fill your gas for you when he returns your car. Um, but they, so in the 90s, they cover the, the books. I didn't even read them. I listened to them on the audiobook while I was like mucking out stalls and feeding horses early in the morning in autumn in New England. It was very iconic. I loved it. I can send links or maybe I could put them up on the screen or I don't know, put, put them in the description. They'll be around if anyone wants more info about them. I can, I can give that to you, but they were fun. Um, but they're not necessarily canon in that. They're similar to sort of the Star Wars extended universe now, you know, and that they got outmoded. But they were very fun. They were well written. I think they cover up to Code Veronica, so they don't get to the original four, which is sad because I would have loved her take on them. I read a very funny interview with her that was very like, she's very sort of blase about the fact that she wrote these books. It's like a fan person had written her and was all excited. And she was like, oh my God, I can't believe anyone's reading this. I think she's like a school 
lunch lady or something somewhere now and a stay-at-home mom she was like oh yeah i just got the job because like my dad got offered the job but then i can take it so i took it and you know they barely showed me much of the games but like i wrote this book and I, it's like the fact that she's so blase about it was so, was awesome like this lady's badass she has no idea like the fandom or the impact and she's just like yeah i did this thing when i was in my 20s oh, i hate this section but the books are really fun leon's characterization Spot on to the games. Also, that's not that hard, right? I know that this guy is here. Played this game so much. That's not hard, is it? Um, he, in the original two, is, you know, a kid who's trying to become a cop with a heart of gold. Um, and then, you know, he gets traumatized and is dealing with that along with Claire. Uh, but yeah, no, they're well written. And the fun thing about them too is like, because it's a female writer, I don't know why I'm trying to like knife all these people. Because it's a female, oh my God. Because it's a female writer, she does kind of like bridge the gaps in the, in the poor representation from the earlier ones. And that like, occasionally she'll have moments where she'll have Claire's character be like, oh, why did I choose to go riding in shorts tonight? Pants would have been so much more useful. <laughs> So it's fun to watch her do that. Oh, her villains are also really fun too because she's human villains. Um, they're not just big bad monsters. You know, this is like the realm of books. So it's like, you know, human psychology is a bit more um, fertile to explore on the page than just like describing a big monster. So she has a lot of human villains throughout. She has, you know, corrupt umbrella workers, corrupt either in, in terms of how greedy they are, in terms of being motivated by science or corrupt in that like they're cowardly. She has the really creepy, who, who's done quite well in the remake of, of two, which we'll definitely do on this channel. Now I've just decided we're going to do it so I can talk more about the books. Maybe I can read some passages. We can do like a read along, guys. Um, but she has the corrupt police um, chief from two, the creepy one who has like the body of the girl and everything. Again, female, being a female in games, sometimes it's not fun. But, you know, I guess these are things we got to explore, right? Because, unfortunately, we don't live in a fair world. Um, but, yeah, so the books are really fun. Leon is referred to as Red a couple of times, which made me remember that he was a redhead in the original game. So it was a passing remark once about... Um, about Leon being from New York. And it's like, that's so... Out of, he, he's not, he does not have New Yorker vibes at all doesn't have the bde to be from new york um but yeah i highly recommend fyi i am like a big fan of this series obviously i wouldn't like i, I wouldn't get into some sort of a fan type competition with anyone because i i hyper fixated on resident evil a while back uh it's been replaced by many a thing lately so i don't think we're gonna even do all five of these but i don't really want to go around and find them while i'm recording but uh, it's been a while since I have fixated on them, so I'm kind of my intel is um is rusty. I believe that didn't take him. All these reeds are in the way. Okay. Black bass, cool. There's a beep somewhere around here, so we know it's... There's charges. Okay, well that's treasure, right? Oh fuck, okay. I believe I just missed this guy. Do we have any freaking No. Right, some body shots because we're panicking because he's right by us. Oh, okay, I guess I can eat the black bass, but like we gotta figure out the health situation. Because we're out of, um, hurt. <laughs> out of herb, guys. <laughs> Big problem. Have you guys seen any of the, like, memes of, of what being an actual... Uh, what being a companion to Leon would actually be like on, on these missions? They're always funny. They're always about him, like, eating weird, inappropriate things. Like, you turn and you look and he's just got a giant raw fish in his mouth. Or him, like, mixing together herbs. Fuck. I don't like that worked. 
Oh, I gotta equip my rifle, don't I? So I can get the crossbow, guys. Although it's got iron sights on it, which I find irritating. I don't like those. At least I think they're iron sights. Text my gun nut friend and ask him. Or I could just Google, but I generally don't like Google firearms and have that in my search history. Although, you know, my search history has been through hell at this point anyways. I don't really know how to aim well with these. I think I did hit that. Right, we got ammo and stuff. Okay, that charge, it must be from farther down. Now it's right there. I walked into this at least a fair few times when I was practicing. Um. Hey, just keep swimming. Oh, more charges somewhere. Literally right here, okay. Yeah, I gotta work on the lighting in this setup. I guess I need to get like a monitor light, like a bar light for above my monitor because the brightness is... Yeah, the brightness. I was about to maybe try turning it down. It, it, like the PS4, it, like it's it's a PS4 Pro. I, I'm gonna get a 5, people. I am. It's in the mail. But um, the brightness is uh, is calibrated properly. Um, but then when you turn when you turn a giant key light onto film, it's just it's directly in your face and some of it's gonna hit a screen. Thought I saw a medallion there. Nope. We've been watching this series straight through. Um, you can tell I'm getting more tired. I've been batch filming today and it's like 10 minutes from midnight now. Um, it's not this a while. Um, my reflexes are getting sluggish, but we're going to power through. I mean, don't you... Some of my favorite gaming sessions have been like when I'm way too tired to be doing it. It's like, it's late, whatever, but you power through because you're, you're stubborn. You're like, no, no, I want to like, I want to keep playing. You know, this is fun. Um, some of your best best moments and best like laughable moments come from then. Chicken egg, great. I love the um, the showmanship with which they display the chicken egg toast when you collect it. It's right up there, you know. Like you get excited. No, it's it's a chicken egg. Um, but yeah. Anyways, what for you guys? What is the uh, what's the the defining moment in terms of when you know you need to pack it in? Is it just that like your reflexes and the shooting goes? Do you get like giggly? Like, does your mom come down and tell you to tell you to go to bed? What is it? I do actually have to be up early tomorrow, so I'm fucking myself over. But it is what it is. I mean, I work with horses, so it's like you, up to feed them. They rely on you. Uh, I keep hearing that snake hissing, and I'm over it. I okay, will head back. We have boat fuel now. We'll deal with all our friend El Lago. <laughs> Maybe that's the defining moment when you walk into charges and you've been successfully taking them apart this whole time. All right. I'm embarrassed. It's fine, people. Shit happens. Okay, is there more freaking... I thought I cleared this area, honestly. No. Oh, okay. I do see people. All right, we're gonna try to run past them because... Like, I don't know where the ammo, and I know where I'm going. Although, if one of them has a crossbow, they can get me in the back doing this. Nope. Okay. We're back where we parked our ride, folks. You know what time it is. It's time for... One of the fandom's favorite lines from this series. <laughs> no, more importantly, El Lago. We deal with the harpoons. Let's see if I can do this bot. This um, it's like, I guess it's like a mini boss, right? It's more like an encounter. But well, it's a boss. It's a big ass monster in the middle of a lake. It's you know this Spanish Resident Evil ver version of the Loch Ness. Let's see if I can do this while I'm this sleep deprived. Nice moment to show off the biceps there. We have some like pull cord stuff at work. I was like such a badass. I like put my shoe on it. And I'm like yanking. I was feel oh nice little view there. It's a great shot. Sun setting. 
So we know we gotta make it till to sunrise the next day. Finish this game. Save Ashley. I do love things that are sort of like over the span of a night. It's a fun um, narrative device. Uh-oh. Don't you hate when your ride breaks down? The wobbling back and forth. Long time to have a really itchy ear. Okay. Oh. Here's Johnny. We need a bigger boat, Leon. I Mixing those references, that was bad. That was bad of me. I'm sorry, I'm sleep deprived. I think I, I got really tripped up the first time I played this because I didn't realize you had to steer the boat. And I think they give you a note about it, but like, I don't know, it's kind of... Yeah, see that note move over. I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at pattern recognition, but um, I don't feel like his movements are as predictable as you'd expect them to be. Okay. I hate that when you release it, I didn't even hit the trigger on that, it just, when I released it, it threw a harpoon. It seems wasteful. Although, I, yeah, you've got unlimited, but. Think you can swallow me whole, huh? <laughs> yes! I'm kidding. They knew what they were doing with that line. I'm sorry. Hey, I hit him with like two. I could have sworn that I freaking did. Oh, that's fun. They give you one. No, okay. It, it did hit the um, hit the boat durability. I thought it it didn't because it's from the other. Um, it hit the other end. Okay, let's see. Where the fuck? Times like these are when in games like this you miss um. You miss having an enemy uh, health bar. Because <laughs> you really want to know, like, what he's up to. You're like, how long do I have to keep pushing, <laughs> avoiding trees in this lake? I made the mistake of trying to get that little knobby end of his tail as he dives under the water, and it's like, no, it's not. Like, that's not gonna... Not bad. Okay. I wasn't... Guys, I, I full disclosure, I was not anticipating being able to do this in one shot. Because, um, again, I'm... I am tired. It's funny, I haven't even... Like, I haven't been... Well, technically, I think I have been going... Oh, that's such a great shot, the way it's lit. It's beautiful. I love that, like, Capcom clearly absolutely loves their characters. They like them like they're, like, angels. Oh. Got Leon's infection is progressing. See, that's a great shot, too. It's just, like, the vulnerability of it and the way it's framed in the water with the blood surrounding it. Oh, everything is, yeah. This, this, I've, I've spoken on this before, but the cinematics of this, like, it, it's so, um... It's, I mean, cinematic, yeah. There's so many great screenshots um, of the way things are framed and angled. Um, symmetry, I mean, everything. There's there's slices that look like they could be paintings, you know? It's just, yeah. I love it. I love it. Capcom's killing it in so many different ways. All right, on that note, as I've been going on and on about how I've been filming for a bit, my reflexes are getting bad. Our chapter ends, and thus, our episode ends. It's not going to be as easy when I play other games, is it, to decide when to stop? That's a fun little thing about um, filming these videos that I've realized it's like, I don't, I'm not, in my head I'm like, I want a certain amount of end product content, but it, as far as how much the raw footage is going to translate into the end timestamp footage, like, don't really know, folks. So when I don't have neat chapter ends like this, I might be a little screwed in terms of figuring out, but we'll figure it out together. I love learning new skills, don't you? Anyways, thank you for joining me for another installation of our Resident Evil 4 Remake playthrough. We talked a lot more about characterization and story. I told you about some books from the 90s while I got stabbed. <laughs> 
Anyways, I had a grand old time. I hope you did too. Um, I'm actually going to power through and try to film one more episode, even though this wig is making my head itch like a motherfucker. Uh, better not get lice or something. Um, but yeah, anyways, I hope you will join me again. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, hope to hear from you guys if anything I said, you know, resonated at all or if you have any thoughts about my various little little tangents. Oh, I mean, next time we should hopefully finally meet Ashley. Um, oh, fingers crossed. I'm totally, it's funny, I've been, I've played this game so many times, but you do, sometimes you, if it's been a while, you do forget exactly where the story beats hit. Um, it, it takes you quite a while to get to her, which, which makes sense, you know. She's the mission and everything, and also she does add another layer of difficulty, right? Because you have a companion now that you have to um, protecting you to watch her health and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I love I love talking about Ashley as a character and Ada, and I love you know venturing forth in terms of new um, new environments. So we'll see. We sh we sh we shall see, and I hope we will get to that next time. But anyways, uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Hope you guys had fun.